All right, welcome back to the Breakfast Connect show on Africa Business Radio. Of course, our conversation today has been centered around something that I consider a linchpin in the world of business, in the world of politics, and uh, the economy at large, and it is the media. While ideally the media should strive for accuracy and impartiality, the reality is there are often some imbalances in coverage, including in terms of women and their perspectives in these areas. Which is why on our guest segment today, I'll be having Dr. Yetunde Odubesa Omede talk to us about sustainable career in media and politics as a woman. Now, I'm going to give a quick um, background or a quick profile of who my guest is uh, this morning. Dr. Yetunde Odubesa Omede is a visiting assistant professor of global affairs and politics in the Department of History, Politics and Geography at Farmingdale State College, where she teaches comparative politics. Uh, she's also the CEO of Yetunde Global Consulting. Uh, it is a manage- management consulting firm specializing in leadership development, human capital management, organizational management, and global business strategies. It's great to have you on the show, Dr. Yetunde. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Right. Now, I was going through your profile. There's a whole lot of great stuff going on there. You wear many professional hats. What is Mm -hmm. the foundation? Um, I think the foundation is really having impact in knowing sort of your purpose and aligning that with your passions. I think they're both in line and Mm -hmm. also not in a sense limiting yourself to just one role. Um, So we're all multifaceted individuals but you'll see everything that i do has a connecting theme around leadership and having um impact right and i see that you've really set a whole lot of great example when it comes to leadership there of course during your graduate studies you were elected the first the first woman after 10 years of its inception as the president of student association of global affairs that is great you are also elected the vice president of graduate student government association and president of uh, sigma iota rota honor society for international affairs a whole lot of leadership stuff there now coming to the conversation uh, today on the show how would you describe ethics when it comes to media in africa we have normative ethics, which is what we call, well, there's what we call the corporate code of ethics or our code of conduct, you know, what is right and what is wrong, what is sort of black and white, um, how you're supposed to act in a workplace setting or mm-hmm. in a social setting. But I also believe we have what we call personal ethics. This is what guides us in our daily lives on what we believe as individuals is right and wrong and how that is expressed in our daily decision making and the actions that we take. Those are the ones that we create on our own and are oftentimes influenced by, it could be our value system, our beliefs, our religion, our upbringing, our family structure. And then there are structures that we walk into, Mm -hmm. such as in the office place where they have their code of conduct, which is really their ethics system that really shows you what you should and should not do. And so sometimes we live in a world where sometimes the two, the personal and the professional don't go hand in hand or it's either compromised. Um, and so we see a lot of issues around ethics, issues around global ethics as well. Um, and so we're just in a space on how do we mitigate in areas where sometimes the powers at B, that B, are not in a sense making ethical decisions or making decisions that do in fact affect a huge population of people. Mm. So... I think in a nutshell, hopefully, you know, you understand in a sense what ethics means and and where it falls in line in the personal and sort of public spaces. Right. Now, over the past one year, uh, for a start, the past one year has come with a whole lot of changes, global changes, economic changes and all of that. Uh, How does all of this current global changes in media, how does it affect or how does it promote and encourage women? Um, I mean... In general, what we see in shift in, in, in media is that, you know, look, as an undergrad, when I was doing my bachelor's, I studied journalism and media studies. And, you know, of course, we see the changes in the trajectory and the different innovations that have come along, advanced technology. But there was always something as investigative journalists. And there was one thing that, you know, when it came to journalists, we really respected their work because it took a lot of time for them to investigate stories, to bring out what was the real credible facts. But now when we turn on the media, 
when we look to media, especially, you know, newscasts, news stations, you know, newspapers and, and the really, I think, important outlets that we go to to actually get factual media, a lot of elected officials have been using this phrase, fake media, mm-hmm. which has caught wind and sort of what it has done is really demoralize the system of journalism and has really, in a sense, made people question if the media that they are or the news that they're receiving Is it tangible? Is it concrete? Is it real? So everything is second guess. Before we used to believe in media outlets and certain publications and say, okay, these people are trusted. They're credible. They're trustworthy. But now everything is questioned. And I mean, as it should, things people should have be able to have reflective thoughts and question what they're reading and what they're hearing. But at the same time, it does put a spin on media now where people are very skeptical of media and very skeptical of the news that mm. they're receiving in terms of journalist, you know, journalistic news. Yeah. And then when we come to social media, it has done, you know, some good and has done some damages. So, yeah, no, not just media, even in the space of politics, for example, uh, women politicians may be underrepresented in news before and after elections, even though we've seen a lot of changes. So if I'm in, in the U.S., we have Kamala Harris as the vice president. Yeah. We have Janet Yellen as the treasury secretary. So a lot of changes are happening. But then we have some parts uh, of the world, especially in Africa, where, you know, there can be a strong preoccupation with women as mainly victims or celebrities. Uh, so how does balance now or imbalance affect politics? Well, of course, imba- imbalance in politics is going to be expressed in a multitude of ways. When there's an imbalance of, let's say, women versus men who are elected officials, you have an imbalance in decision makings that affect women. And so here, even in the United States, we have a lot of men who are in office, but women are steadily growing and rapidly you know, rising to assume leadership positions. But when it comes to issues such as sexual health and reproductive rights, um, you have then a higher number of men around the table who are making decisions that affect women's bodies, Mm -hmm. right? Or who are making decisions that solely impact a woman's life and her Mm -hmm. lifestyle. So when there's an imbalance of that, that means that there's not a balance of voices. There's not a balance of thought process that has to go into making policy or legislation or laws that really will impact a multitude of people. So you have one gender that is making more decisions that affect another gender um, and, and, and making more decisions that, that, and they don't have the full picture, right. um, of the scope of the issue. And so that, that, that creates an imbalance and it creates a problem. Mm. So. So now with all this advocacy for more women in politics, more women in media, what impact will it create both in Nigeria and in the U.S.? I mean, I think, you know, we're looking at in areas of what we'll call gender mainstreaming, gender equity, gender equality. So we're taking off those boxes in that sector, in that segment, when it comes to having more women in politics and trying to have that 50, 50 you know, equity mm-hmm. um, when it comes to having women and men in these positions. So, of course, it's going to help to make more informed decision making. You're going to have more voices at the table that's going to give various perspective of the life of a man and a woman in society. And it takes both of those voices to achieve decisions that are going to have positive outcomes on those in the population. So I think those are the things that we end up achieving, um, which is extremely important. Interesting. Now let's talk about your book, The Balance. Tell us more about yeah. this book and what led you to, you know, write the book. So the book on balance is called Balance and then Balancing Life, Love, mm-hmm. Family, Career, and the Pursuit of Your Dreams. And, and what really led me is that just in the many hats that I wear, I think people always ask the question, oh, how do you balance it all? How do you balance being a, you know, a wife, a, a mother, a career woman, and all right. of these different things? But the interesting thing is that it wasn't only women asking me this question, it was also men. Because we oftentimes, when we think of the role balance, we try to, we have a picture of a woman and her, mm-hmm. you know, working mm-hmm. and cooking and children and all these other things and running around. But to be honest, balance is a human issue. It is not just gender specific. Um, the same thing a man can be asking, you know, maybe he's a first time father. And he's trying to balance his career and raising his children jointly, you know, or he's trying to run a business and also, you know, focus on his professional desires. You know, there's so many different things that people are trying to balance in their lives. And I wanted people to understand that 
and understand that when our lives are out of balance, it shows up in different ways. It、mm-hmm. shows up in our health, in our emotional, physical, spiritual state of mind. True.、Um, it also can affect on a from a Macro individual level to a global level. What happens when politics is out of balance? What happens when the workplace is out of balance? You know, you end up seeing things such as injustice, right? Sex discrimination,、mm-hmm. inequality of different various forms because things are out of balance. So the word balance is very loaded, but in this book, it's unpacked and hopefully it helps people. To focus on the things that really matter the most、right. to them in their lives, right? And、uh, of course, all of this, you know, comes down to leadership development.、Uh, women need、right. to be ready to take on these positions when the opportunities come at the end of the day. Which brings me to、yeah. um, yet today, global consultant. Tell us about that.、Mm-hmm. For me. And yet, Tuna Global Consulting, which is really focused on leadership development, human capital management, and so we go into institutions, corporations, and we provide their entry level workers to mid level career、um, employees to their senior level executives with customized leadership development and trainings.、Mm. So we're looking at conflict resolution and management to emotional intelligence in the workplace to how to sort of、um, increase productivity and performance in the workplace, and then we l- realize. In-、mm-hmm. For my company, Atuna Global Consulting, that you know, most of these corporations, some of them, of course, are are in the new age, so they're working with artificial intelligence and not really human bodies. But majority of people are workers in an organizational setting, and so you want to ensure that they are getting the training and the development they need to ensure that your performance and productivity is making your institution or corporation the best that it can be.、Right. And, and and you're not going to be able to achieve that if you don't instill the type of Development that is necessary for your employees, and so a lot of a lot of people get that. A lot of senior senior level executives get that, and so we come in and we train them, and we also train the senior level executives to ensure that they treat <laughs> their employees with in the framework of emotional intelligence and、mm-hmm. not just. Factory machines that are just there to output、right. because we're dealing with human beings who are complex. Right. So a lot of people, organizations, even might want to reach out to your consultant firm. How can they get across to you? So they can email me at info at theatunayglobalconsulting dot com. You can visit the website www dot theatunayglobalconsulting dot com to find more information. All right, thank you so much, Doctor Yetunde, for your time on the show this morning. We really appreciate it. I hope that you'll be available if we need to talk more on this subject. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. And that was Dr. Yetunde Odubesalmede. She is a visiting assistant, professor of global affairs and politics in the Department of History, Politics, and Geography at Farmingdale State College,、uh, where she teaches comparative politics. She's also the CEO of Yetunde Global Consulting, which is a management consulting firm specializing in leadership development, human capital management, organizational management, and global business strategies. And that、uh, is it for our guest segment on the show this morning. I'll be right back with more programming. Stay with us.